Hamill High School in Brooksville, Florida. It's rivalry night in Hernando County as the Nature Coast Sharks take on the Lepers of Hernando. I'm Will Wilkie. I'll be joining you tonight for the pregame call. Tonight's rivalry game has got some weather in the area. I'm going to prepare for it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, certainly a great matchup here tonight. We're glad that you're joining us here on the Gulf Coast Sports Network. You know, this is a game that's gone back and forth year after year. Both teams leaving it all on the field, trying to bring home that W, not only for key considerations for playoffs, but also for the last five And just a little bit more regarding the and the field conditions tonight. We're going to toss it on down to Derwin Gray on the field for the pregame before Derwin. Yeah, thanks, Will, man. I'm super excited to watch these two teams battle it off tonight. I think it's going to be a good one. As long as the rain stays far away, I think it'll be a good game for football tonight. Both teams have something to prove. Hernando definitely have a lot to prove tonight. So I'm excited to see these two teams battle it off tonight. It's rivalry week. What better time to play harder than ever today? Back to you, Will. Thank you, Jordan. That's exactly right. When you got a rivalry game, you can throw the record right outside the window. It's all about pride and desire here tonight. And we sat down with both coaches to give us their keys to tonight's ball game. Our keys to tonight's game with Hernando, um, you know, I think we're going to try to be very explosive tonight against these guys. Um, you know, it's always a rivalry game, so, you know, you can throw records and everything out the window. Um, um, but we, you know, we always expect a dogfight against these guys. But, you know, we're going to try to try to get the ball out and about and, and do some damage that way. Uh, defensively, you know, our goal is always a shutout. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to be aggressive, um, but play disciplined football. This game against Nature Coast is huge. They're our, our biggest rival. Uh, you know, emotions are high. Um, we're trying to get to where we can make this called the Mayor's Cup uh, for uh, for the city. Um, but I don't have to help. I don't have to do anything this uh, the week this week of practice to get the players motivated to play Nature Coast. They have a great running back. Our goal on defense is to stop their run game. We are stopping their running back, and then we're going to make them throw the ball um, offensively. We want to keep that guy on the sidelines, so we are going to control the ball on the ground. We're going to pound it out, work that clock, and um, uh, you know manage the game that way. Casimir and Coach Startle. I'd like to thank them both for joining us prior to the game. We're giving us their keys to the ball game. We're just about ready to get set. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll come back and kick it up to the loop for Paul and Dave for the call of tonight's ball game. Don't go anywhere. Stick with us here watching the Gulf Coast Sports Network. One of the reasons we've been so successful at Divinity Med Spa is because we understand what people are looking for. They want to look rested, refreshed, good for their age. We can accomplish this by treatments such as Botox, filler, lasers, and an array of facials, all by a team of trusted experts. This is Divinity, Hernando County's only locally owned and operated med spa. Come see us. We can't wait to meet you. Thank you, Will, and we are back. Back for some Friday night football here back on Gulf Coast Sports Network, and we are back again here at Tom Fisher Memorial Stadium. 
Hey, that's right, Paul. We were here last Friday night and witnessed the Hudson Cobras wear down the Leopards in the second half. And tonight ain't going to get any easier for the Leopards as they tackle the uh, 1-0 Nature Coast Sharks, who are led by their senior running back and the Navy commit, Christian Cromer. Yes, Paul. Cromer had four touchdowns last week and a two-point conversion for the Sharks. And most of his damage came in the fourth quarter as the Sharks rallied from a two-point deficit towards a major victory, 35-14. to Cromer is a 235-pound running back, and he's used to wearing out defenses by the end of the game. Also hitting their stride last week for the Sharks was another D1 athlete, Jackson Hoyt, who ran for 80 yards and threw for 172 and a touchdown. He helped coach Cass's team offense achieve nearly a perfect balance. Well, for the Leopards last week, we saw John Capel tally 82 yards on the ground, and quarterback Saltzman had several near completions fall just short as they try again to rectify that passing attack tonight. But the unfortunate thing for both teams that they didn't get a chance to practice much this week just because of the fact that uh, as we prepared for Hurricane Adelia, um, our biggest thoughts and prayers are those for the north counties of us up there in the Big Bend as they try to go ahead and rebuild their community. Absolutely, Paul. Absolutely. Most coaches will tell you, though, the biggest improvements are between week one and week two of the season and find those little adjustments, noticing players that are ready to step it up and scheming for the both. Uh, this season, the biggest improvements will likely be pushed back to week three when the coaches have a little more time with their players. Well, I'm excited to see what game plan both coaches have for tonight with only one practice under their belt to get things right for each team. And despite the challenges they face this week, uh, hopefully both of them seem like they're ready to compete. So let's crank it up and let's rock and roll. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, I was watching them warm up in the, at the beginning. Both teams seem to be working on their pass game, catching the ball with their hands away from their body, testing the field conditions. And now we're watching the captains line up on the edge of the, the sideline there, ready to go for this historic matchup, which, you know, seems seems to be a nail-biter every every time they play one another. Well, let's talk a little bit about Nature Coast real quick. Last uh, last week, you uh, we had mentioned the fact that they had a nice balance. Um, you know, they came out last week. Uh, they pulled off a 35-14 over uh, Point of Senia up there, Kissimmee. Um, they had 185 yards rushing, 172 yards passing, 357 total yards. Mm -hmm. That is a very good balance right there, and that's what you kind of need, especially in week one. Uh, well, Coach Cass has a lot of things working for him down there, but the best part was they scored 24 points in that fourth quarter to take the lead and to take the win. And, and, and talking a little bit about Hernando, um, you know, Hernando's been a historic school, the original school in Hernando County. You know, you think back of all the Leopard teams, such dominance. Lately, not as much. Um, last week, suffered a 52 uh loss to Hudson here at home, um, only amassing 117 yards in all of those yards were on the ground. They went, uh, I think, 0 for 9 or 0 for 10 in passing, not a single yard passing. So hopefully they can maybe right the ship tonight. Well, Qu quarterback Saltzman had some really nice passes last last week, and I think they're going to be completed uh, this this week. So so even though the score isn't awesome for them to, to, to look it back and they don't have a whole lot of time to change things, they are have you know they do have a different opponent tonight, and Saltzman still looking for his first completion. I believe he'll find it tonight. And, and Saltzman's you know he, he's only a sophomore, six one, one seventy five, and and you know he 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 definitely showed some promise last week. Uh, like you said, the the other end catching the ball, just make sure they get on there, catch that ball. They just need to go ahead and forget last week. Yeah, just like it never happened. Yeah. Uh, Capel, the, the offense went through Capel last week. I mean, if he wasn't getting the ball, he was most definitely folk, uh, faking faking the ball, and and, and a you know, big big part of his team's offense. I want to go ahead and encourage fans to subscribe to our channel. It's free and it helps us out and allows us to play the uh, trivia challenge that we got coming up here in the uh, start of the third quarter. And also make sure that you follow us on Twitter and Facebook. For some more free content, such as the highlight videos with tonight's game, game announcements, and other special features. So go ahead and hit that like and subscribe, click that bell, and all that other good stuff. 
Yeah, we should have a, a great senior spotlight tonight with Leandre Wright from the Hernando Leopards. Looking forward to hearing his story, his journey, and, and just how football has impacted his life over time. So as we're waiting for uh, the, the captains to come out here uh, prior to kickoff here, a um, couple quick things over, get some uh, housekeeping stuff out of the way. Uh, with some of our sponsors here with uh, Care One Instant Replay for tonight. We also have the uh, McMurdo Family Vision Scoreboard. And uh, don't forget about Glory Days, which, matter of fact, uh, definitely hit up Glory Days. I uh, had a little uh, birdie tell me that Glory Days went ahead during the hurricanes uh, this past couple days, uh, that they were feeding the linesmen, uh, all those hard-working electrical workers during the hurricane. And uh, our hats off are out there to Glory Days. You know, that's, that's just something that Glory Days is known for, is helping out the community in any way they can. You know, they're going to be giving out $1,000 scholarship later this, this year when we get to the Burger Bowl, which is Hernando versus Springstead. And, and they, they always donate water to, to the local football programs. And here they are feeding the, our local linesmen and linemen from, far, from afar. So we appreciate them and all that they do for this, this great community. And definitely, again, uh, our thoughts and prayers are for the folks up there in the Big Bend area that uh, took a direct hit from the hurricane. And, you know, unfortunately, they may not be having uh, some their own personal Friday night football. But, you know, uh, hopefully that, that can get uh, taken care of sooner than later so they can go ahead and uh, uh, get out there and get back to somewhat normal uh, community activity on a Friday night. Well, it looks like uh, the Leopards won the toss, and they look like they deferred as the, the White Hat's going to make the official announcement. Nature Coast wants the ball. So we're going to see the, uh, the special teams aspect of our football game. Quick shout out to our White Hat tonight, John Ferrara. Been a long, long, long time referee here in Hernando County. Uh, he's been doing this for many, many, many years. Uh, probably close to 30 years, if not more. So a uh, special shout out to John uh, Ferrara for the White Hat tonight. And hopefully those guys have a good game. They never get enough recognition, they, Dave. They, they, they have the toughest, toughest job out there. You know, it doesn't matter if they call a penalty or not. They're wrong by somebody's eyes. But here come the Leopards through their tunnel, getting ready to break through that paper. All right, that means the kickoff is soon to inspire. To be Coach Kaz of the Nature Coast Sharks' first away game as the head coach. He did coach here not long ago, so it's not not too unfamiliar for Coach Kaz. All right, ladies and gentlemen, time to buckle up them seatbelts, sit back, relax, grab your favorite beverage, grab your popcorn, and get ready for some nice Friday night football. Once again, we're coming to you live from Tom Fisher's Memorial Stadium here in Brussels. Right, don't forget about that PDQ. 25% off your order from right now on to the end of the night in Brooksville location only. It appears we have uh, uh, Mr. Harvin back deep along with number 24, Cassius Williams. Cassius Williams did have a, a I believe he had a, got in the end zone also last week for the uh, Sharks. Yeah, kick it off for... Uh... For Hernando's going to be Jesse Fultz. Let's get it on. Little short kick up to the up back. Nature Coast takes it around to the left side. That looks like Carlos Rodriguez. He'll be brought down about the 46. So Nature Coast will start off with some good field position. 
Yeah, just four yards away from midfield strike. Kind of like that. So Nature Coast is going to be let out to the field here by their quarterback, Jackson Hoyt. Junior, 6'2", 200. Said last week he had 80 yards rushing, 172 yards passing, and a touchdown. See what he can do here tonight. Looks like the Sharks are going to light up. Quads, single back. Christian Comer, big man in the backfield. Here's the snap. It's passed to the right. And it's taken down. Looks like he lost him for three yards. That was Cassius Williams on the catch. But flying up for the tackle was the, the Hernando Leopard. Read it from, from afar. I mean, he was seven yards deep when he saw, saw the quick screen. And that's a big loss. Loss of three on the play. So that's going to be uh, going to bring up second and about 13 for uh, Nature Coast. Williams split to the right. He's 21 goes in motion. There's a pitch out to the left. Oh, he's tackled in the backfield. Nice tackle there by Gabriel Sandsmoan. You know, that's a great start for the Hernando defense. You know, negative three yards on the first play, negative yard on the second play. Uh, that's exactly how they want to come out in this second in this second game of the season. So that'll bring up third and long for Nature Coast. Well, they've been playing the five-man front. It looks like they're going to go to a four-man front on this third and long possession. Nature Coast is going to go trips right. Single receiver on the left side is Donovan Neal. Point looking over, see he's going to change the play. There's a snap. Looks to the right. Goes out to Williams. Williams will lose one tackle. Goes up the right side. Breaks a couple more. Picks up about 10 yards on that, but they're going to come up short. Let's check out the Care One instant replay. It's the same play as we saw on first down. It's a quick screen, and the the leopard running uh, def defender come in just out of control a little bit. His feet were a little skinny, and and Williams was able to throw him off and get some important yards. But it does look like they may be going for this. Well, they crossed over into leopard territory, so it's going to be about fourth and four. Well, they got Hoyt out. They got Cromer taking the direct snap. He goes up to the right. Runs over one person. Looks like he just might be a little bit short. It's going to be close. Yeah, he's right at the sticks, but and the spot's going to be important. It looked a little short, but... They're going to measure on this one. They said it's too close to tell. So they'll bring out the chains here. The Leopards are pretty fired up. They're clapping over there on the sidelines. They believe it's still short. Yeah, they think they think that uh, they stopped them, and they could be correct. We'll have to take a look here and see. Now, I think he, look at look at this shot on the sidelines. They were short. The Sharks were short. It'll be first down for the Leopards. So the Leopards' defense stands. And Hernando some, will come out and take the field now. There's some energy on that, that leopard sideline right now. Hernando will be led out there by Michael Saltman, 6'1", 175, sophomore quarterback. We mentioned that uh, you know he had 33 yards rushing last week, so let's see what the uh, Leopards can do under this first down. Takes a snap, hands it off, goes right up the middle. That's Capel on the carry there. Picks up about four yards, three yards. Yeah, you can you can look at the defensive line right now for the Sharks, and it appears that they're going for a little quicker defensive line than your average thick defensive line. And as I say that, they bring big 74 uh, Chase Murray in to, uh, to get a big rep in here. So that'll bring up second and seven for Hernando. One receiver split to the right. Man in motion. There's the handoff. Capel again up the middle. Picks up about another four yards. 
And if you can march four four yards down, that'll get you to the end zone. So it'll be third and third and a couple here. Taken down by the aforementioned Chase Murray. So Hernando's looking to uh, pound the ground out here. Bring it up uh, third down and then about three yards. They did sub another bigger fella in as well. So they got they got a little bit of strength right there in the middle, trying to slow down Capel. Yeah, two men in the offset eye here. It's also with the snap. Hand it off again up to Capel. Goes up the middle. Looks like he got the first down on that one. Yeah, Capel just follows his offensive lineman. I mean, he didn't have to do anything, move a left, move right, but go go north and south, and he was able to get the, the three and a half yards he needed for the first down. Well, Hernandez uh, got a little bit of something going right now here. Uh, going to be first and ten on uh, Nature Coast's 46. In the Shark Territory for the first time tonight. Sultan brings him up to the line again. Twenty in motion. There's a pitch out right to Capel. Capel shakes one. There's a flag on the play there. Gets up to about the uh, 40, 41 yard line. It looks like it's going to be a holding, though, on uh, Hernando on that. Let's, let's check out our uh, Care One Instant Replay real quick. See if we can see that. Quick. Oh, right there. Yeah, he, he got the, 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 the white 12. Got a handful of the back. So that's where the penalty was. Good, good job by the officiating crew catching that. Might be able to see Saltzman put it in the air here. Yeah, I mean, they're in a position to where they go ahead and pass the ball here, uh, second and long. Two lane split to the right there, Saltzman in shotgun here. There's a snap. Gives it up to Capel again right up the middle. Breaks a couple tackles again. Picks up about five yards on that one. So Capel just definitely uh, just... Manhandling up the middle, just following his blockers. Yeah, that was tackled up by number 46, Donovan Magozo, getting in on some of the action there. So the Leopards are faced with a second and 15 on this one right now. They continue to rotate defensive linemen, the Sharks defense does. Well, they're going to have to. I mean, you know, it's... it's Pretty still pretty humid and you get gassed out there. So Saltzman rolls to his right, looking downfield, dumps it over, oh, right through the hands. That that was a great ball by Saltzman, and uh, that was right at the sticks, right at the sticks. He got both hands on it. Yeah, 45, right through right his there. hands there. Nice pass, though, there by Salzman, like you said, rolling to the right. And it looks like we're going to have an official timeout here for a water break. So we'll be back right after this. third and 15 here yeah they're going to be in the third and long situation here going to be definitely a passing down here for Hernando so. there's a snap takes the handoff Saltzman goes underneath oh bobbles the ball it's hot it's hot he jumps back up on top of that that's his first completion of the season and uh, turned into a fumble after the catch, but they were able to get their ball back. 
but that holding penalty really shot the uh, the drive down. Yeah, they used the 15. The momentum was definitely uh, stopped on that. Uh, they had a nice little drive going there, get that holding, and put them in the shambles there. So definitely going to be fourth and long. Folks will be out here to punt for uh, Hernando. Back deep is Carlos Rodriguez for the Sharks. They did give up two touchdowns last week in their punt return game. Looks like a little false start there. Right side of the line there. Looks like they tried to get a little bit of a head start, so that's going to move them back about another five. So now it'll be fourth in a country mile. So again, mistakes. Got to be careful on the mistakes there. That's a mental thing. Needs to be corrected. So here's the snap. There's the punt. Going to let it bounce. Takes a slight Nature Coast roll. And it'll be first and 10 at the 30 for Nature Coast. Sharks will come out here. Well, I'm excited to see what, what we see out of this offense. Last week, we talked about the balanced attack. Uh, the, the Leopards really sniffed out everything they had on offense the last series. So we'll see if we can get see something different this round or if it's going to be a Leopards defensive night. Yeah, they held them to a three and out, so uh, Leopard's defense looking for a repeat performance on that. You have the five men up front like they did on the first three downs? So it'll be first and ten officially on the 29 for Nature Coast. Hoyt looking over the defense. Cromer is a single back. There's snap. Hoyt takes it himself. Tries to go up the middle, taken down by Kevin Williams of Hernando. Gets a short gain, maybe about two on that play. Well, just a quick fake to uh, Cromer, and then he got right on his hip and tried to get a couple more yards, but the Leverage defense is there. There's a lot. It's not just one person trying to attack you. It's two or three, but it'll be second and ten, second and nine. Long nine. So Hoyt will go ahead and uh, call it out again here. See if he's going to go back to that bubble screen. There's a snap. Now oh, he's looking a little bit farther downfield. He scrambles. He goes up, takes it himself, goes right up the middle. Picks up close to the first down. Looks like he's got definitely the first down now. Picks up about... Uh, 10 yards on that. Let's check out the Care One replay, Paul. He's, he really does want to throw it, but the guys are covered. He sees a lane, and he gets it, makes one guy miss, and he picks up the first down. Yeah, he was looking uh, deep down the right side there. That was good coverage on the uh, Hernando side there. Uh, decided just he's going to take it himself. Scamples for about 10. The Leopards have a freshman over on the on the cornerback side, uh, Kamari Dotson, who was in in uh, protection there. It'll be first and ten at the forty. Nature goes forty. Three thirty-five left to go here in the first quarter. Boy, shoots it out to the left side. Nice catch there by uh, number eighty-five, uh, Gilberto Garcia. Yeah, check this out. This is a this is a really good throw for especially for a lefty. He just squares his shoulders, the guy comes open, and boom, you know, easy five yards right there. Angel Garescu, number number three on that tackle. He he had a busy week last week for the Leopards. This formation is what what the Sharks like to call dozer. And it's obviously a short yardage formation. Cromer's close to the first down on that one. About maybe a half a yard short. You know, the Dover formation is all about numbers. You take the quarterback out, you got an extra blocker. 
Well, one of the things the Leopards can look for, too, is that uh, on the on the two plays that they did run that, obviously he's going to be probably running towards the heavy side of that uh, offensive line and in the backfield. So here it is again. Cromer goes right back up the middle. Picks up the first down on that one on a two-yard scamper. Yeah, those two yards will help move the chains. I bet they bring Hoyt back in for the for the first down. He's over on the field talking with Coach. Well, Cromer last week, he had 102 yards rushing, four touchdowns. That's uh, not too bad for the big man. So that'll bring first and 10 for Nature Coast in the Hernando territory at the 49. Again, Hernandez defense, not looking too bad. Not no. looking too bad. Man in motion. Goes to the running back. Goes up to the left side. Taken down by a whole host of leopards. That was Cassius Williams on the uh, on the jet fake before the uh, the direct handoff there to uh, Connor. Connor Riggins on Riggins, that. yeah. So it looks like he picked up about one yard for uh, the Sharks. Hoyt did a real nice job of getting that ball into Riggins' belly, too, because after the fake, he didn't have much time. No. So Crumber comes back into the game. Second and nine for the Sharks. Again, nice balanced attack. A little bit of passing, a little bit of running. Great view from the sideline, Cam. Hoyt hands it off to Crowberry. He goes up to the right side. There's a flag on the plate. Breaks up through the middle. Picks up about uh, 13 yards on that. Let's see what the flag is. Let's check out this replay. Crowberry's touched by about four or five different people, and that's one reason why he's such an effective runner. As he gets this, he actually breaks it outside, not in between the tackles, and then he moves these four, five, five leopards, and it was an original first down, but there was some laundry on the on the turf here. Let's see what the White Hats call is. Looks like we got a holding on the Sharks. Well, that will negate the first down. It's going to back him up. That'll bring up second and 20 for the Sharks. Definitely puts them in a passing situation now. Second down is it's getting to be more of an important down than third down anymore nowadays because it really sets up what you're going to be doing for the next two. So see what Hoyt here has to offer for the Sharks. There's the snap. Drops back in the pocket. Heavy pressure, heavy pressure, and he's going to be taken down. Yeah, they got to him. Both defensive ends came off. Looked like number 41 was one of them there. Yeah. And that would be Gavin. Uh, Gavin, Gavin, the talented junior off the edge. And uh, Hoy just stepped back, and before he could get his, his head downfield, he, he had to make sure he... So that'll end the first quarter here with Nature Coast 0, Hernando 0. Certainly I'm an avid golfer, been, you know, golf usually weekly play a lot with uh, my wife. With the repetitive motion, as you know, with a lot of golfers, it's an unnatural motion that you put your body through. After suffering for years with shoulder pain, Mike chose stem cell therapy as an alternative to surgery. I'm just excited because patients that have been pain for years that are now doing the things that they want to do, and Mike's just going to be adding to that list. Call Aligned Integrative Medicine for exam and x-rays to see if you qualify for stem cell treatment. So, hey, fans, here we go. We're going to be starting up here the second quarter. Don't forget that during tonight's broadcast at the PDQ in Brooksville, from now until closing, you get 25% off your offer. So make sure you hit up the PDQ over there on Cortez Boulevard.
Well, don't forget about the PDQ Trivia Challenge that will be taking place in the third quarter. Chance to win a free meal. Boy, keeps it himself. He's going to try to go ahead and get some yards. He, he picks up about uh, 15, 16 yards on that play, but they're still going to be well short. Fourth and 10 is going to be bringing up for Nature Coast. They'll bring out the punt team. Yeah, the Leopards had six six defensive backs on that. Dropped back, gave them some room, but they were pretty pretty sure they weren't going to be able to uh, beat beat him with his legs for that 25 yards. And it'll be fourth down. we got Capel back deep for the uh, return man here. Yeah, Gagney's going to be in the punt for the Sharks. A little bit of a low snap, picks it up. Gets a nice punt off. Chance for Capel to show what he's got. He takes it, takes it right up the middle. Breaks a couple tackles, and then he's taken down by a host of Sharks there at about the 27-yard line for the Leopards. So. Well, well, I'm going to say I think catching a punt is the hardest thing to do in this game. And to catch it in the traffic and be able to take a couple hits and still fall forward without losing the ball, that's some work right there. If you're a punt returner, you need to take out an extra life insurance policy <laughs> because I'll tell you what, I've seen some of them cats take some serious hits. Yeah. So. Well, Hernando going to go ahead and uh, get the chance to go ahead and give it back to the Sharks here. It's going to be first and 10 at the 28-yard line for Hernando. we got a and flag. we got a quick flag here. Possible substitution? We'll have to see. Substitution. He called it, Paul. Did yep. you see someone run in or out? Yeah, usually in that situation there when they start throwing the flag before the play's even, you know, they're walking up to the line, it's usually going to be a substitution foul. Too many guys in the huddle or whatnot. So it's already going to be in a hole, so it's going to be first and 15 for Hernando. Paul, the safeties for the Sharks are six yards away from the ball, so they believe it's going to be a run. Here's the snap. There's the handoff to Pell right back up the middle. Stopped immediately right at the line of scrimmage by big number 68, Ben Harper. So Hernandez just going to keep on going right up the middle there. Have Capel keep driving up the middle there. Eventually, he hopefully uh, Hernandez's side is going to uh, break one off. Well, he did say he had 4 5 40 speed, so... So if he can just get a little bit of daylight, we could see him taking it to the house. That's like grandpa speed right there. <laughs> so Saltzman set up in the shotgun here, second and 15 again. Here's the snap, hands it off to Bill again, right back up the middle. Ooh, nice tackle there. That's, that's 12. Uh, that's Connor Riggins coming Riggins. in from the left side to make that tackle. Capel picks yeah. up about four or five on that one. Check out this replay. I mean, he, Connor just gets real skinny right at the, the point of contact and went way below the knees there for that tackle. Yeah, he crashed in from the left there. And uh, nice solo tackle there by a the young man. So that'll bring up about third and 11 for Hernando. Nature Coast is rotating their, their secondary. Ooh, got some oh, movement. Yeah, looks like they got him to jump. Looks like they got him to jump there. Going to be offsides on the Sharks, so they get five free yards in that one. Yeah, a little eager on the defensive line there for the Sharks, but still brings up third down in about five, which is more manageable than third and ten. Yeah, it's a little bit more manageable. A little bit more manageable on that one. So that one, you know, now, now again, you're in a situation there where – those uh, five yards there makes a difference on uh, the play call. So let's see what Hernando's going to give to him. Capella motion. Goes out to Capella on the right. Tries to make one move. Picks up about two yards on that. Taken down by Adrian Jackson of uh, the Sharks. Yeah, the, the quick replay. We just see a little late motion here by Capella. Like a glorified sweep, really. Quick pass. Trying to get him outside the tackle box. 
but it will bring up fourth and four and a punting situation. So Rodriguez is back deep for the Sharks. Folks is on the punt for Hernando. The defensive grudge match we got here tonight. Those high Popped punts, up, sky high. Those high punts can be very uh, troublesome for the Sharks if they don't know where the ball is and they touch it. That's a live ball. Absolutely. Well, it's down at about the 42-yard line. So we'll be back after this with Nature Co. Zero, five. Hernando I mean, Zero here in I the second quarter. I haven't ran uh, because I just believed that my body was on the decline, that the pain that I was experiencing uh, was not uh, tolerable enough for me to go out and run. And, and the day that he adjusted me, I felt that relief, and I felt like I could actually put on my cleats again. Paul, we are scoreless here. In the second quarter, 0-0. Zero, zero. This is be the Sharks' third possession on offense. So this Crummer going right up the middle, bowling his way over several people. He just has great balance for a 240-pound running back. Capel grabbed the money ankles and held on tight, and he was drug about two yards and. He's just he, running with his eyes right here. See that? He just sees it. Quick little burst. Picks up his knees and finishes it forward. He's got very much shades of uh, like an Earl Campbell uh, type of uh, running back right there. Yeah. You know, he sees a guy. He stares him down. Puts his shoulder down and goes right into him. He's not trying to elude anybody. He's going right at him. Yeah. That was John Capel on the uh, tackle of Cromer. But it's first down for the Sharks. So the Sharks at Hernando's 44-yard, 43-yard line. Point the shotgun. There's the snap. Looking to pass. Rolls to the left. Going deep down the left side. Little hand jabs there. Wow, that, that was a good ball, and it's a good adjustment by the uh, wide receiver here. Edney. Was that, was that Edney? Okay, which was a stop and go. Then he adjusted the ball right here. And just doesn't get both hands quite on it. That was nice uh, coverage there, too, by uh, Garastecki on that Ga play. Garastecki was in his pocket. So second and ten for the Sharks. I think it's another dose of Cromer up the middle on this one. Looks like Fernando's uh, stacking up there in the middle there. Boyd taking his time. There's a snap. No, he's going to go quick out to the uh, left side there. That's Grant Landing on the reception for a quick seven-yard gain. Grant Landing is the transfer uh, sophomore getting in some action. Coach Kaz spoke to us at media day. Very excited about the sophomore. His brother plays D1 uh, tackle at USF. The on Jerry Wright, our uh, senior spotlight, uh, made the tackle on that. This directs at the Cromer. He goes up the left side, bowling some folks over wow. again. He, he, he does like to be a bit of a bully when he is running the ball. And he picks up about eight yards in that. You know, committing to Navy, you know, Navy only offered one senior a scholarship this year to be running back. And uh, just happened to be this fellow right here. So, so the, the Sharks, Sharks, they got something going here. They, yes. they're, they're moving the ball down. Yeah, they go back in that dozer formation again. Cromer, set back deep, looks it over, gets the direct snap, goes around the left side, picks up about three yards on that. It looked like the Hernando defense snuck in the, through the middle, and uh, was, you know, Cromer still able to sneak out two like yards. Vincent, Vincent Pittman was the first to get him, tripped him up a little bit. Got cleaned up by the rest of the defense. So it'll bring up second down at about eight yards for the Sharks. Again in that dozer formation. There's a snap. He's going to take the left side again. And there he goes. Picks up about another three. Four yards in that one. That'll bring third down. 
at the 20. Yeah, Paul, it's, this is two down territory. So, you know, you can easily see them staying in Dozer. So we'll go ahead and take a commercial break here for a water break. Nature Coast Zero, Hernando Zero. So we're back here, second quarter, score tied, Nature Coast zero, Hernando zero. It's going to be third and about four for uh, the Sharks. There's a snap to Hoyt. Gives it up the middle. Oh, he is hit hard. That was a real hard tackle. That was number 41 for Hernando. You're going to see this. Hoyt holds the ball out, signifying handoff. That was and Harvin on the run, and then Gavin just came in and just absolutely manhandled him. There is a flag on the play. Let's see what it is. Didn't see any holding or anything on that, so might have been on the tackle itself. Yeah, legal use of hands there. Uh, on the short, so that's going to move them right back. That's a drive killer right there, Dave. Yeah, they, they were inside the 20, or just outside the 20, but it, they still get the third down back, and they, you see them bring Hoyt back in. So it's going to be about third and 13. Definitely a passing situation. Got trips to the right over here. Single coverage at the top. Boyd's looking to the right. He goes over to the left. Now he's going to take it himself. Scrambles back up the middle. Taken down by a host of Leopards. That'll bring up fourth down. A little bit short on that. He, he is short, but he you know he picked up a good solid six yards on that. And he wanted to throw, but the, you know, the, the yards presented itself. Looks like Cal Coach Kaz is going to go for it here on fourth down. Well, in this kind of situation here, I don't know, you know, what their field goal kicker, that's, you know, that's high school football here. You know me, Dave, I'm all about the kickers, buddy. And 40-yarder uh, might be a little bit too long for the uh, Sharks. Uh, so, looks like uh, Hernandez is going to call a timeout. A, yeah, they're going to think about it, so. Let's take, a, let's take a break ourselves. We'll be right back. I got two seconds. So we're back here, Tom Fisher Memorial Stadium. Score tied 0 0 between the Sharks and the Leopards. Going to bring up fourth and about seven. Sharks are going to go ahead and go for it. Looks like he's trying to, Hoyt's trying to give, uh, drive them off sides. And we're going to take a timeout, the Sharks will. So we'll go ahead and take a timeout ourselves. Still no score. 
One of the reasons we've been so successful at Divinity Med Spa is because we understand what people are looking for. They want to look rested, refreshed, good for their age. We can accomplish this by treatments such as Botox, filler, lasers, and an array of facials, all by a team of trusted experts. This is Divinity, Hernando County's only locally owned and operated med spa. Come see us. We can't wait to meet you. So we're back here again. Shark's going to go ahead and reboot this, fourth and seven. Got to see what they can do on the uh, play here. Hoyt drops back, looks to the right. Plenty of time, slips, rolls to his left. Nice completion. They pick up the first down. That's Donovan Neal on the catch coming from the right-hand side all the way to the left. Check this care one instant replay. Hoyt slips right there as he steps in he slips but he's able to keep the ball alive hold the ball up and uh 23 neil runs all the way across for a huge first down for the sharks so that'll be first and goal for the sharks at about the uh, hernando six yard line seven yard line looks like they got two backs in the backfield this time so hoyt with two in the backfield yeah, it looks like Andrew Williams is the is the new back. Powered up on the right. It oh. looks like he went to go hand it off to Cromer, but Cromer went to the left, and Hoyt is just going to take down in the backfield, lose about three yards on that play. That was definitely a miscommunication, I think, on that one. Yeah, that's, you know, they got one extra day of practice, and that's no excuse because both teams only got one day of practice, but... You wonder how many of these errors are going to come up because they haven't pra they have they haven't played a game and you know, obviously they haven't played a game in a week, but they have only had one practice since the last game. So that'll bring up second goal at the nine for her, for the Sharks. There's a snap. The Hoyt goes right up to Crumber. He's going to go up the middle, taken down about uh, two yards short on a shoestring tackle. So that'll bring up third down, and actually looks like he's about the, about the three-yard line. It kind of looks like what the play was designed for the last play. So third down, and they're in the bulldozer formation. Schroeder takes a direct snap, looking up the middle, puts his head down, walks right in for six. Touchdown, Sharks. All right, Sharks are in for six. Yeah, Cromer took his time on that one. He kind of waited for his hole to open. He saw it, took the opportunity, and walked right on in. So, Again, he just does a really nice job of running the ball with his eyes. He has some really good speed. So Florkowski's, yeah, Florkowski's on for the extra point here for the Sharks. There's the snap. Kick is up. Good. J Jake Florkowski is a soccer player for the Hernando or for the uh, Sharks. Comes out and kicks every now and then for the for the Sharks. So fans, don't forget, stick with us in the third quarter for our PDQ trivia challenge. Your chance to win a free meal at PDQ in Brooksville. Just join our in-game chat and be the first to answer the question correctly. And that's going to be coming up at the start of the third quarter. And also, don't forget. Now until closing at the PDQ, uh, PDQ uh, in Brooksville, 25% off your order. You just got to walk in and you get 25% off. That sounds like a great deal to me, Paul. And also don't forget the senior spotlight at halftime. It's going to be Hernando Leper's Leandre Wright. He's going to be featured. So stay tuned with that. Sounds like a full plate. That is a full plate right there. <laughs> So Nature Coast will be kicking off. Brian Gagney. There's the kick. 
Nice high kick. Goes to uh, Garasnecki. Taking it up the middle. Stopped at about the 23-yard line. That was Car Connor Riggins on the tackle for, for the Sharks. But Garasecki is a dangerous man. He he just looks like he has so much explosion. Well, Hernando's going to go ahead and uh, see if they can get something going here towards the end of the, here, uh, the first half. Overall, they played a pretty good game. Uh, a couple mistakes here and there. Um, we'll see what Saltzman can bring out here. See if they can maybe get some points up on the board before the, the half. Well, we're going to toss it down to Dorwin Gray. See what he sees down there on the sideline. We're going to come back and uh, speak with Derwin in a moment. There's a snap. There's the handout. Oh, looks like Capel might have slipped there trying to cut back. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing more. That's not far from where we saw Hoyt slip. So it might be just that time of, of the night. Could be a patch of ice on the field. Who knows? So that'll bring up second and ten again for Hernando. See the split on each side. Sharks are a little late lining up. Capel deep in the backfield. Saltzman under center. Here's the snap. Pitch off to the left to Capel. Breaks around our left side. Picks up a nice gain there. Close to the first down. Big tackle by Sipidis uh, for the Sharks because Capel was off and running, and we know he was using that speed. Yeah, if you would have beat. Yeah, he broke that corner. That would have been lights out. So that's uh, going to bring up third and uh, about two yards for the uh, Leopards. At about 144 left to go in the uh, half. In the half. Saltzman really tosses that ball into to Capel's belly pretty hard. No, I'll, I'll say they're moving a little bit on the slow side here for our time left here in the half. Uh, you might want to pick it up a little bit. Okay. Here's the snap. Saltzman looks to the right, fires out. Oh, close to an interception. Nice play there by Rodriguez. Yeah, huge break for Rodriguez. Check out the Care One instant replay. He reads this right from the go. As soon as Saltzman gets the ball, he just it's really just a baseball throw right to, to the target. And Rodriguez flies in to knock it down. But it is a fourth down. So it's fourth and uh, about two and a half. The uh, Leopards will go ahead and decide to punt here. They will be getting the ball to start the second half. So Rodriguez back deep for Nature Coast. There's a punt. There's a nice punt there. Takes a Hernando bounce. It's going to be down at about the 22. Or well, correction, 27. Well played by the Leopards as they let it roll, eat some clock. I mean, we had 11 seconds roll, roll off that punt. And now they have to come out on their side of the 30. Really good punt. So we'll see if the Sharks want to go ahead and just kind of eat the clock out or if they're going to go ahead and... You know, with that balanced attack that they have, and, you know, Hoyt's definitely got the uh, arm to fling it. They do got two timeouts left. Um, they, may, they may do a little bit of driving here, so we'll see what they do. Well, the Leopards have showed man coverage several times, so there's that. So they got trips on the left, single on the right, Cromer in the backfield. Hoyt lining up in a pistol formation. Here's the snap. Hoyt, quick over to the left. Gets Harvin. Brought down. Right at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Harvin's 5'5", 125 pounds, but they believe if they can get him loose, he can, he can take it to the house. They have him labeled here on the roster as an athlete. So it looks like the Sharks are just going to go ahead and try to probably maybe run this out here. Not sure if they're going to be taking any shots downfield. 
or I could be wrong. There's a snap. There's a quick pass to the left again to Harvin. He's, oh, correction. That's uh, Edney on that the catch. That was Edney on the catch on that one. Brought back, loss of two yards on that. And it looks like they're going to be satisfied to go in the half of the 7 nothing lead. I think you're right, Paul. We've got a lot coming up on the halftime. We have the senior spotlight. It's Leandre Wright from Fernando Leopards. But an exciting first half that shows uh, the Sharks 7 and the uh, Leopards 0. Exactly what we thought we would get out of a historic rivalry like this. Yeah, both teams out there, you know, showing some little heart, especially on defense there. And uh, here at the end of the first half, it's going to be Nature Coach 7, Hernando nothing. And uh, we'll go ahead and throw it over to Will. Thank you very much, Paul and Dave. A great job on that first half call. What a game we have going here. Rivalry game all the way. 7 nothing is our score. Nature Coast holding an advantage over Hernando currently. But we've got a great second half upcoming. Be sure to stick with us. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have Leandre Wright, the senior spotlight for tonight that we'll feature. And also field broadcaster John McMurdo will be interviewing Jeff Lang, the Hernando athletic director, to give us a rundown on all of the Hernando fall sports programs. So you don't want to miss that. All that and more coming up next on GCSN at the half. Don't go anywhere. Stick with us. You're watching the Gulf Coast Sports Network. Certainly, I'm an avid golfer. Been, you know, golf usually weekly. Play a lot with uh, my wife. With the repetitive motion, as you know, with a lot of golfers, it's an unnatural motion that you put your body through. After suffering for years with shoulder pain, Mike chose stem cell therapy as an alternative to surgery. I'm just excited because patients that have been pain for years that are now doing the things that they want to do, and Mike's just going to be adding to that list. Call Aligned Integrative Medicine for exam and x-rays to see if you qualify for stem cell treatment. Thank you for sticking with us here at halftime. Coming up at the beginning of the third quarter, we'll have our PDQ Trivia Challenge. Courtesy of PDQ Brooksville, your chance to win a free meal, value up to $12.99. Just go into our in-game chat room and be the first to answer the trivia question correctly there. And then we'll give you instructions on how to go ahead and claim that free meal. Again, courtesy of PDQ Brooksville. But for now, let's get our halftime show started with our Senior Spotlight featuring Hernando Senior, Leandre Wright. I played for TPYFL, the Gators, and I played for the Hurricanes. And we was like six, seven years, so like we played up a lot because we had bigger players. And we didn't go by weight limit, we went by age. And when I was basketball, I played on nine sports. So, yeah. And then I fell in love with the game by watching the NBA and the NFL. I love watching Tom Brady, Mike Evans, uh, Derrick Rose, Jordan, one of some of my favorite players from the NBA and the NFL. In seventh grade, well, that was my first time ever playing in middle school, so I was a little scared. But then, like, I got on, I got on the field with a lot of my friends. Went to elementary school, and we all went to middle school together. So as I'm getting on the field with them, like, it was like was, the game was all about fun. 
So, and Coach Bland, he was a like throwing quarterback, so throwing um, coach. So we like to throw the ball a lot. So one of my big plays was against West Fernando is seven to zero, and like we just throw like a sixty yard bomb, and I score. And I was excited, and now I'm ready. Now I'm ready to get in like the real season, and that's uh, that's when I learned like. Yeah, this is my game. I like to play football. I'm going to eighth grade year, like I used to be like I'm like I'm the big dog on campus now. Like it's fun. I I know where everything is, and I had a lot of sixth graders like little cousins. They coming in looking up to me. So as we take the field, like they're like, "Are you ready?" I'm like, getting them hyped, getting them ready to play. So that year we went three and four. It wasn't the year we wanted. I mean, I wanted to go out with a bang, but yeah, that was the transition was. I'm just ready to go to high school. Well, I mean, entering my freshman year at Hernando High School, I was a little bit nervous, like I'm an underdog, underdog on campus. But then, like, I know a lot of older people, and I started hanging with them. So then, like, and I'm on the football team, so, like, I know a lot of those players. So going up to the football team, it helps. I would play quarterback and wide receiver, and I played defensive back. Most of my year on JV, like, I was on there, and then, like, I was grinding, trying to make it to varsity. Then I got the big call up. I was ready to play, excited. Beginning of my sophomore year, I had an injury that like bounced me back, but I started grinding on JV. It was like more of a like get back here, revenge year. So I started grinding, grinding, trying to get back in that mode on varsity. And I mean like at the, towards the end of the season, I started feeling better. I started taking care of my body, eating healthier, doing the right things, all to get my leg back in shape and yeah going into my junior year. Yeah, Leandre Wright is a, is a tremendous athlete. He's got tremendous ability. When I first um, was introduced to him last spring in 2022, um, I had high hopes for him right from the beginning. But he also played basketball. So that was one of his loves too. Uh, turns out that basketball made him a better football player. And then we got him to love football again and uh, had a good spring in 2022. Uh, actually pretty much handed, uh, single-handedly won the Citrus game for us in the fall. So he's going to be a great wide receiver, cover corner for us. He's going to return kicks, and he's also one of the team leaders. Going to my junior year, you know, we had a lot of coaches change. So we had a new coach, Coach Cargo. I had to embrace the change, but he's a good coach. He coached me a lot, wide receiver, DB, whatever you need him at, he'll coach. But my breakout game as a wide receiver that really like made me amped up, uh, Chris River. I had three catches for two touchdowns and 85 yards in the first half. So like, that just really like made me like who I am now. Like I think I'm like the big dog. Like I can't be stopped at receiver, and now I'm just ready for senior season. Uh, Leandre's come a long way. Um, I've noticed uh, over the last 12 months working with him, uh, his leadership skills have gotten better. He spent more time in the weight room. He's gotten bigger, stronger, faster. He went to some camps this summer uh, to help develop his skills. And uh, he's really taken um, uh, a liking to the new culture that we have there at Hernando High School. And he's embraced the playbook on both sides of the ball. And he's actually like a coach on the field for us now, especially when we get multi-formations when we're on defense and we need to make those adjustments. Uh, he's really stepped up and helped us make those adjustments with the younger players. As much as I love football, I was, I'm a two-sport athlete. I love basketball too. My sophomore year was the first time I ever stepped foot on the basketball high school basketball court. Um, we were district champs that year. I led the team in assists and steals. Uh, and then going into my junior year, I mean, we had I was on varsity. That's when I got pulled up to varsity. We had a lot of big guys, and then. Mid-season, I started, that was my first game started. I was happy, excited, ready. And then my senior year, I'm just ready to break out now. Leandre, uh, you know, he's a multi-sport athlete, loves basketball, loves football. Uh, and I promote them, I promote all the players to go play another sport, wrestle, play basketball, run track, do something. Um, but uh, the, the skills in basketball really relate to being a skilled player in football a lot of stopping, starting, transitioning, uh, a lot of jumping, a lot of leverage, um, and then, you know, just endurance. You've got to be in great shape to play basketball. So all of that translates to being a skilled player in football.
My goals for this year at Hernando High School with the team is I want to break at least a thousand yards receiving. And I think we could do that because we got a good quarterback now. And a team goal, I think we should at least have an eight and two season, if not 10 and no. You know, we've been grinding all summer, working hard, getting younger guys up. They're helping out on varsity, giving us good looks on scout. And that's, I'm just ready to play. Uh, Leandre's more of a vocal leader. Um, he'll get you going if you're not going. If you need a little uh, push, he'll help push you a little bit. Uh, he likes the, uh, you know, playing by the rules. Everybody's on the same plane, whether you're a starter or whether you're third string. Uh, everyone needs to follow the rules. Uh, he's helped some of the younger kids get rides home. He's helped bring some kids to practice that needed a ride, so you can always count on him. He was a big uh, uh, provider of transportation this summer when we went to the USF camp and the Buccaneers camp and all the other camps that we went to. So he's really stepped up vocally and, I guess, by example, um, but more vocally. I love playing football, but I love grinding everywhere. I love grinding in the classroom. I'm an honor roll student. I got a 3.2 GPA. Uh, volunteer, helping others, getting their grades up outside of school. My teammates, I help them with their work whenever they need it, especially the younger guys coming up. If they ask me something, I'm there for them. Well, uh, Leandre really wants to go play college football. And I've made it clear to him that he has to get it done in the classroom. And he's one player that I don't have to worry about in the hallways or the classroom. He ta he's proactive. Uh, he takes advantage of that, and he makes sure that he gets it done in the classroom, in the hallways. Uh, he's got great grades, and uh, I never have to worry about that part of it with Leandre. I can't believe I'm a senior already, but like I played ball since I was little. But one person I could do was my brother, Tawan Lee. He helped me through my journey, bought me stuff, helped me gear up, helped me drip. Like He always helped me get ready whenever I needed it. If I need something, water, Gatorade, make game, He's there for me. He's at every game. He doesn't try to miss one. Yeah, I'm happy for him. Thank for him to be there for me. I think for Leandre, I think the future is wide open for him. Uh, he can play at the next level. Uh, it just depends on uh, you know what schools are an option for him, what he wants his career to be academically, moving forward with a major once he graduates from high school. Um, he's got the charisma and the character to, you know, to go as far as he wants to go. I love the ride of Hernando. I'll always be a leopard, but I can't wait to get after it. And that was the senior spotlight featuring Leandre Wright. We'd like to thank Leandre as well as Coach Stargle for taking their time to meet with us. We're also going to be having an interview with uh, Hernando Athletic Director Jeff Lang just a moment after we come back from the break. So stick with us. we got a little bit more left to go here at GCSN at the half. We'll be back right after this. Thanks, Will. John McMurdo with the Gulf Coast Sports Network. I'm here with the athletic director, Jeff Lang. Jeff, how are you doing tonight? Good, good. we got a good crowd here for community uh, football, uh, which we like to see with our rivalry against uh, Nature Coast. How do you feel about the uh, football season? I know it's only the start of the second game, but so far it's a nail-biter 7 nothing. Right, just got to uh, stay ahead of the chains, avoid penalties and all that, and hopefully we'll have a good second half, get the ball first here and get
get out there and get after it. That's right. It seems like it's going to come down to a few special plays maybe. Uh, let's talk about the rest of your program, the fall sports, and then the spring if you'd like to talk about anything with us there. Sure. Uh, we just cranked up with uh, volleyball. Uh, they beat Central the other night. We're excited about that. Great crowd, which is good to have the boys come out, support the girls' sports. We like the girls' support the boys' sports. Um, cross country, our Zach Lewis, uh, Lucas Invitational is on Tuesday. I think that's about 15 teams or so. Okay. Should be going good. And then uh, wrestling will get cranked up. Uh, we had two state champions in uh, wrestling, Grace Leota uh, and Devin Williams. Uh, were state champions last year. And uh, girls weightlifting, uh, we had a state champion there. So that's worked out real that's well excellent. for us. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're not busy at all, huh, uh, Jeff? <laughs> well, can you tell us a little bit about the new uh, baseball area over there you got going on yeah that's all community dollars there uh that donated to us uh that's 170 foot 75 feet long by 50 feet wide it'll have uh, double bullpens two cages and all that we're very very fortunate to have such wide community support baseball team's been to two final or i'm sorry two regional finals uh this year we're going to have our softball stadium we'll be back up and open uh, which is one of the best venues for softball and the softball team of course is coming off uh, two final four appearances and a regional final last year So I think we're really looking forward to that. Well, that's great Congratulations to you and Hernando's got a lot going on here with athletics as you can see and they've had a lot of success and we wish them the best in the fall and the spring uh, Thanks again, mr. Lang for stopping by Appreciate it. and back up to you. Well, thank you Thank you very much, John, for that report, and thank you to Athletic Director Jeff Lang for Jeff Lang for meeting with us and running through all the Hernando happenings and all the great things that are happening with Hernando Sports. We're going to take one last break, and then we'll check in with the McMurdo Family Vision Regional Scoreboard to check on all the scores within the region, and then we'll come back for the second half call with Paul and Dave in the booth. We'll be back in just a moment. Again, thank you for joining us for GCSN at the half. Seven to nothing is our score advantage in Easter Coast, but we've got one heck of a ball game left to go. Again, we'd like to thank Coach John Scargle, Leandre Wright, and Hernando Athletic Director Jeff Lang for taking their time and supporting us and allowing us to be here and bring these wonderful programs and athletes to you live here tonight. But for now, we're getting ready for the second half call, so let's take it back up to the booth for Paul and Dave. Boys, take it away. Back, folks, here to Tom Fisher Memorial Stadium here in lovely Brooksville. Score, Nature Coast 7, Hernando, nothing here. It's a good first half, defensive-minded first half. Uh, a little bit of positives on both sides, a negative here and there. It's going to come with the territory. We are in week two. Uh, but one of the things that, you know, Hernando can definitely hang their hat on is they look very much improved then from last week. Uh, against uh, Hudson, you know, giving up 52 points is not always fun, but this week they look like a totally different uh, team. Well, in that in that first week game, we saw the special teams gave up 21 of those points. So, so that their defense last week was a shining spot, and it's it's showing right here tonight that they uh, they can play some defense this season. And Nature Coast side over there, they're, uh, you know, again, a nice little balance of running, passing the ball, um, heavy dose of Cromer uh, and Hoyt. Um, again, it's a it, it's a defensive uh, football game. Well, and, and Hoyt's throwing the ball not to just one receiver. He's spreading around. We've seen, we've seen the landing kid catch it. We've seen the, the um, Edney boy catch it. I mean, we saw so many different receivers for for the sharks catch the ball so it's not just that alpha male receiver well fans also don't forget start of the third quarter we're going to have our pdq uh, trivia question and uh again don't forget that you can get over there to the pdq in brooksville 25 percent off until closing so 
what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and take a break at this point. When we come back, we'll have the start of the second half. Welcome back, fans, here in downtown Brooksville. Got Nature Coast 7, Hernando, nothing here. We're going to start up here in the second half. Folks, don't forget to like and subscribe here at the channel. It's free. And it helps us out and allows us to, you know, play this trivia challenge that's coming up here very shortly. So, mind you, there possibly the answer could be on the field. Right before the very eyes, Paul. Exactly. So keep watching, hit the like, subscribe, join us in the live comment section. Also follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more free content such as highlight videos of tonight's game and announcements and other special features. So we're going to get rocking and rolling here. Nature Coast will be kicking off. Hernando deferred to the second half. They'll be receiving. Let's we'll see what they can go ahead and produce a little something, something going on here in the third quarter. Action shot from the sideline. Cam, our cameraman, might be able to catch an onside kick. Ryan Gagney will be kicking off. Back deep for Hernando. Looks like uh, Kamani Dotson and Angel Garasecki. There's Garasecki feeling in about the eight. Going to take it up the left oh, side. Makes a nice move. Good he block. steps out of bounds about the 27-yard line. That was number 12, Yankee Cabrera, on the block that set set his buddy Gosecki free. Check out the replay. All right, here we go. The, the trivia question is up. The first correct answer in the live chat will win. Who led the UFC Knights in punt returns in 1981? We're going way back on that one, ladies and gentlemen. So if you happen to know, go ahead and throw your answers there in the live chat. First one to answer wins the PDQ gift certificate. It's $12.99 uh, meal deal. So get your answers in quick. So here we go. Hernando starts Saltzman under center. Offset eye. There's the handoff to Capel. It's going to go up the left side. Stop at the line of scrimmage there. Immediately. Yeah, pretty much stood up right at the line of scrimmage. The, the Sharks have gone with their bigger package on the defensive line. That was Jericho Owens on the on the stop. So that'll bring up second and eight for Hernando. Definitely using Capel to maximum effort tonight. So Hernando will have two split to the right. Saltzman shotgun. Looks like they're leaving Leandre uncovered right now. There's a snap. Hand off to Capel. He's going to break to the right side. There's a flag on the play. He's going to get stopped about uh, two yards short. We're going to have to check on the flag. Usually that's an indication in the area of holding. Did have a helmet on the ground by uh, the nose guard, Donovan Magnolio. He'll have to go off for a play. And we got holding on Hernando. 
So again, mistakes, shooting themselves in the foot here. They have an opportunity to get a couple good drives going. The mistakes start happening. And then I'll move them back 10 yards. So that'll bring up, uh, looks like about second and about 16. Make that second and about 18. So Hernando, looking to go ahead and get a little something here to start the third. Taking advantage of getting the ball to start off the uh, second half. Let's see what they can do. Saltzman under center. There's the snap. The pitch to the left. Sansone on the carry. Sansone picks up about... About eight yards on that. Maybe back up to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, just short of the original line of scrimmage. So we're going to call it about the third and 13 on this. So again, Hernandez put in a passing situation here. It's also been a couple passes tonight. Not too many. But it could be a situation here where they got to start getting some yardage here. They can't be uh, relying on the uh, run in Capella all night long because uh, Capella is on the sidelines. He's getting a little gas, so. Saltzman in the shotgun. There's the snap. Fakes the handoff. Looks to the right. Good throw. Got to go out to the flare. Nice. Oh, oh, right off the fingertips of Garasecki. It was a nice throw there by Saltzman. Yeah, check out the, the replay here from Care One. So, Salzman's just going to step back. Got his eyes downfield. He's going to deliver a strike. And, and and the young receiver is just trying to keep his feet in bounds and, and, and loses track of the ball. But that will bring up fourth down for the Leopards. Yeah, another punt. Folks coming out the punt. Rodriguez again back deep. Folks had a pretty good punt last time. Took a friendly Hernando bounce. There's the snap. Sets up. There's the punt. Again, another friendly Hernando bounce. Rodriguez thought about oh, it. He thought. He thought about it. And it's going to be stopped at the 27-yard line. So there is a flag back on the play, on the back side of the play. It's a legal shift on the offense. Most likely that penalty is going to come back. And they're going to probably put them again. I don't know if we can catch a replay, see if maybe we can see the shift on that. Well, Paul, the answer is coming up. Coming up soon. <laughs> So that's going to move Hernando back another five yards. So we'll go ahead and try it again. So again, these mistakes, simple simple mistakes, are, are costing them a, a good chunk of yardage. Well, and it's and, the hidden 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 field position, even uh, though it's not really hidden. It's a, it's a lot of mental mistakes, too, on this. I mean, illegal shift, that's just somebody not concentrating. So, so here oh. it is. And we got another flag, and that's probably going to move them back again. My, Actually, offsides. There we go. Yeah, he, so he, they, got a, he got a big jump off that, that edge trying to block it. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to move them right back to the five. So we're going to go ahead and do it one more time. See if Rodriguez is going to have an opportunity to return this one. Well, he wants he wants to return it. There's the punt. Short. And it's going to take again. Oh, get out of the way. Hernando bounce there. Down by Leandre Wright, our senior spotlight at halftime. Trent Montgomery did a nice job of getting out of the way. He didn't see it early, but as soon as he heard it, he got his feet out of the way quickly. Because that will become a live ball. So now the Sharks will go ahead and take over their first uh, possession here of the second half. going to be first, first and 10 at their own 43-yard line. Looks 
Jerk's got two receivers to the right. Double backfield. Pistol formation here. Let's see what Hoyt's got. There's the fake handoff. There's the pitch out. Number 12, Connor Riggins. He's going to be taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Garasecki on the tackle for Hernando. That was the first time we've seen that play where they fake it to Cromer, pull it, and then option uh, with Riggins. That, that was the first time I've seen that. Well designed, but the execution at the end was not there, especially with Cromer running up the middle like he has been all night long, uh, you know, just taking people down left and right. Um, so looks like they're going to go back to their traditional uh, trips on the right formation here. So we got second and ten for the Sharks. Fernando holding strong. Fake handoff. Hoyt's going to take it right up the middle. Picks up about eight. A little extra effort there. Taken down there by Sansone. All right, the PDQ question. Who led the UF, the UCF Knights in 1981 in punt returns? And that is the current head coach, Coach John Scargle, which was answered in the, in the chat room. There's a picture of Johnny Boy back in the day, 1981. Congratulations, Mr. Mark, for coming up with that answer. So we got third down for the Sharks here, about two yards. Hands off to Cromer. Oh, Cromer's going to go face. around the left side. Ooh, take it down low, but he does pick up the first down. Well, if I was in on that tackle, I'd be going down low, too. Yeah, he'll run you over. Probably not a fun time trying to tackle that fella. So that'll be first and ten for the Sharks. They've got an in Hernando territory here at the 43-yard line. 7.20 left to go here in the uh, third quarter. Sharks up 7 nothing. Got a late shark walking off the field here. Harvin moving over to the right. There's a snap. Takes the handoff. Hoyt going left. Deep. Man, he's got a man open. Oh, a little bit underthrown. Pass is intended to uh, Edney on that. Yeah, and he had a little bit of separation. Let's check out the replay here. A little bit of separation right there. Comes back for the ball. And and, and good play for, for Gasecki on, on the, uh, the coverage coming back. Yeah, he definitely had the separation. Um, he tried to come back on the, on the short throw there. Just couldn't get his body back around Gasecki. Gasecki had a nice little coverage there. Made up some ground at the end. So we'll bring up a second and ten for the Sharks. <laughs> Hoyt takes it himself. He's going to scramble to the right, cuts back in the middle. He gains about uh, seven yards. Hoyt's got, he's shown us some bursts. You know, he, he's not afraid to run. He's not afraid to finish the run. A lot of times quarterbacks try to go out of bounds. He, he doesn't mind putting his shoulder down to get a little contact as he's uh, marching Capel, for these last few yards. Yeah, Capella in the tackle there. He's a little bit of bang. And we got a flag on the play, and it's going to be a 10-yard penalty. So we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we get back, we'll see what the penalty is. For the past five years, I haven't ran uh, because I just believed that my body was on the decline, that the pain that I was experiencing uh, was not uh, tolerable enough for me to go out and run. And, and the day that he adjusted me, I felt that relief and I felt like I could actually put on my cleats again. So we're back here. Capel's going to be uh, shaking it off here. He's going to be walking. So uh, it's going to be a 10-yard holding penalty against the Sharks. So don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, our Glory Days player of the game is going to be at the conclusion, the announcement uh, in the fourth quarter. And, uh, again, we like to thank Glory Days for everything that they do and the fact that they were helping those uh those electrical linemen out there during the hurricane, and uh, again, we appreciate everything Glory D does for the community. So, so that's going to bring up second and very long for the Sharks. Moves them back over on their side of the fifty. 
Got five receivers spread on this. Got a timeout. Yeah, we got the, a timeout. Uh, the Leopards did not wow. like the, the formation. Let's, let's take a timeout ourselves, Paul. And we're back here. 616 left to go here in the third. So right before the last break, John Capel went out injured. Uh looked like it could have been a calf calf strain. He's, he's sitting on the bench now, so they are without Capel on the defense. Which has been a key player for him on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. So we're going to bring up second and about uh, 20 yards. Five receiver set. Hoyt got a man in motion. There's a snap. Takes the handoff. He's going to take it himself. He's going to go up the middle. Oh, nice little tackle there. They're going to catch that uh, Leandre right on that for Hernando. Hoyt picks up about uh, about. Six, seven yards on that. And we're going to go ahead and have a water break timeout. And with that being said, we'll go ahead and take a timeout. So halfway through the third, Nature Coast 7, Hernando 0. So we're back. That was the uh, McBurdo Family Vision Care scoreboard. If you're interested in uh, hopefully maybe one of your favorite teams around there are winning tonight. So that'll bring up third down and about 13 yards line. 13 yards. Wait, man in motion. Whoa, that looks like a uh, fire drill here. Oh, he still gets the pass off. He's trying to fight for that extra yardage there. A little late on the fake on, as soon as the ball was snapped. But the quarterback got his eyes downfield and made a good pass. It will bring up fourth and a long three. That was the Donovan Neal there on the uh, catch there. Yeah, that play, that uh, that was a wreck from the beginning. <laughs> great, great view from the sideline cameraman down there. Great job, cameraman. John McMurdo. Great work down there. So it's fourth and three. Dozer formation. Cromer going to the left. He's looking. He's, he breaks through. He gets the first down. He's up to uh, about the 28-yard line. So that'll be a first down for the Sharks. They're moving it. Yeah, Ka Capel usually lines up right over that side, and he, he is still... Not in the game right now. No, he, he's back out there now. He's he looks like he's okay. He's uh okay. I see him now. Yep, yeah, he's taking the snaps now. So he's back out there. Whatever you had, he shook it off. So the Sharks will be first and ten at uh, Hernando twenty nine. You got Riggins in the backfield. The handoff goes to him. He's going to go up to the left hand side. He picks up about twelve. Brings it down to uh, Hernando's 16 yard or correction, 17 yard line. Gusecki on the tackle for Hernando. Gusecki's been on a lot of a lot of action this he's, evening. He's been all over. Offense, defense, special teams. 
So the Sharks have an opportunity here. They're inside in the red zone. So first and 10 at the, looks like a 17 yard line. Voigt and the pistol, Riggins again in the backfield. Trips to the right, there's a snap. Voigt looking to the right, fires into the corner. Oh, oh wow. nice catch. That's Donovan but Neal. Donovan Neal goes up the ladder and scores for the Sharks. You know, that, that was a great throw, but it was a really great play by Donovan Neal. The, the throw looks like it's going to be overthrown, and it looks like it's going to be intercepted. Right here, he throws it, gives his player a chance to come inside and steal that ball away from Jesse Folks. Yeah, Folks went to go ahead and uh, try to go to the outside on that, and Neal cut it in, and cut it back onto the inside, goes up the ladder, scores a six. Here's the extra point attempt. It's up. Good. That'll be 14 nothing the Sharks with 3.47 left to go here in the uh, third quarter. So the Leopards got a little bit of work ahead of them now. Down by 14. So we'll go ahead and take a break here. Nature Coast 14, Hernando. back and don't forget glory days player of the game is going to be at the conclusion at the uh, of the game at the end of the fourth quarter dave will go ahead and give you who the glory days uh, player of the game is and here's gagne kicking off gets garasecki again he's going to go ahead and go up the middle he's up to the 25 he's oh, up to the 30 oh he's up to the 35 yard line he almost broke it we were just talking about how special the player Gusecki is for, for this leverage squad, and he brings him up to the 35-yard line. So Saltzman will bring the Leopards out. First and 10 at the uh, their 35-yard line. I think it's time for... Uh, Coach Scrock will go ahead and open up that playbook with a little bit more passing, a, little, a couple more shots downfield. Well, Salzman has his first two completions of the season and tonight's activity. So let's see if he can connect again. So he's got twins on the right, Capel on the backfield. And then the shotgun, there's the snap. He's going to take it himself. He's going to roll to the left. Oh, that's closed up immediately by number 11, Carlos Mendez for the Sharks. And it looks like Saltzman might be uh, shaken up on the play. He's grabbing his wrist out of his throwing hand. Uh, looks like a cramp. It, now it's his calf. So. One of the reasons we've been so successful at Divinity Med Spa is because we understand what people are looking for. They want to look good for their age. We can accomplish this by treatments such as Botox, filler, lasers, and an array of facials. Hernando County's only locally owned and operated med spa. Come see us. So Solzman's up, walking it off. It looked like he might have just caught a cramp in the calf there. So he'll have to go ahead and sit out of play. He almost got to the edge. Yeah, he uh, broke it. But uh, like you said, uh, Mendez, go ahead and close that off real quick. So. so in the backfield, we got Wright and Capel in the backfield. Like second down in 11 and a half, 12, we'll call it. There's the snap. And there's the handoff to Capel. A little rough handoff. Met at the line of scrimmage. Maybe picked up a yard. Taken down by uh, Aiden Orta. Got another cramp, Paul. Yeah, got another player down. Well, you know, 
It is that time of year here in Florida. The humidity is high. The cramps are high. <laughs> Definitely got to get your water breaks, get your Gatorade, get your electrolytes. And you got to make sure that you're drinking plenty before the game. You don't wait till the game to do that. You do a lot of it before the game. Yeah, it's a, it's a pre pre game drink. Break last up. week, last week we saw uh, teams eating uh, pickles yeah. on, on the sideline. Pickle juice, pickle juice. Yeah, Capello. Well, you know he's had a tough night. He's been all over the place. This is the second time now. I think he's caught that cramp. You might have to go under the tent for an IV. So that'll bring up third and ten for Hernando at their own 35-yard line. Saltzman's back in the game after his little cramp. He got right, wide right. Oh, he's all the way out at the hashes. Cabrera is really wide left. You got two sets back. Saltzman in the center. There's the snap. There's the pitch to Sansone. Going around to the right. Got picks up about down. five, and there's a flag. Sansone really uh, accelerated into that contact. A little that. different kind of runner than, than Capel. You got a holding on Hernando on the edge there. So, Nature Coast looking to determine if they want it fourth and five or they want to go ahead and do probably third and 15. Now it's declined. So, we're going to go fourth and five. Let's see what Hernando's going to go ahead and chalk up here if they're going to punt it away. Or if they're, that looks like they're going to be trotting off the punter here and going to go ahead and punt it away. So we got a minute and 27 left here in the third. Hernando's going to go ahead and give it back to Nature Coast. Rodriguez again back deep for Sharks. Again, he's just itching to get that ball to go. He wants his hands on this ball. He scooted up about three yards in his previous spot. There's a snap. The kick is away. And it's towards the sideline. Gonna go out of bounds. See where they spot it. Looks like it's gonna be spotted around maybe the 48. Yeah. They just keep walking. Oh, okay. Well, we'll go 47 of Hernando. So it'll be first and ten for the Sharks. And we're under a minute to play in the third quarter. Shot. Sharks got really good field position off of that eight-yard punt. So they'll be set up in Hernando territory here. Standard trip formation for Hoyt. There's a snap. And off to Cromer. He's going to go up the left side. Breaking a couple of tackles. He's got somebody riding on his back. And he picks up about 20 yards on that run. Yeah, he put his shoulder down there to finish it off. DeAndre right on the tackle. Check it out. Right up the middle. We've seen it all night. And he's going to put a move on right there. And he watch a finish right there as he lowers that shoulder. Finishes the run. I'll tell you what, Nature Coast offensive line, let's give them credit for tonight, man. Those big boys up in the front there, they're definitely opening up the holes for all time, all the running game there. Looks like there was a penalty, too, on that. We might have missed. It was. It was a holding. Maybe that's why they had such a good hole on that one. Well, so, number 74, Chase Murray, has, has been a three-year starter for the Sharks. They got videos of him on Twitter Power clean at 275 pounds. So we're going to go ahead and throw it down to uh, Derwin Gray. 
Remember what you got down there. Oh, we have a little bit of movement pre-snap. Yeah, looks like we have a little bit of technical difficulty getting a hold of Derwin on that. So, when we get an opportunity, we'll go ahead and throw it down to him to get his two cents for the game so far. We have a little penalty on there. A little false start, so that'll move him back again. That'll be about uh, first and 19 for the Sharks. So here's the snap. Boyt looks, looks. Heavy pressure. Gets hit. Throws it deep. Just overthrown. But Hoyt got leveled. Yeah, that was Gavin on the uh, on the pressure for the Leopards. And Hoyt did not want to underthrow another pass to Edney. Now he hung in there as long as he could. He held it out there and... A little bit overthrown on Edney's part, but he definitely took a shot there by Gavin. Came off clean off the edge. It's one of the worst things when you're lefty, man, especially with it coming around that backside there. Whew. You don't see it coming. So, we got two seconds left, ball, in the third quarter here. Last play of this quarter. Second down, 19. There's a snap. Hoyt going to air it up again. Throws it right across the middle. Oh, that was intended for Edney again. John Edney. So that'll be the end of the third quarter here at Tom Fisher Stadium with Nature Coast 14, Hernando 0. Certainly, I'm an avid golfer. Been, you know, golf usually weekly play a lot with uh, my wife. With the repetitive motion, as you know, with a lot of golfers, it's an unnatural motion that you put your body through. After suffering for years with shoulder pain, Mike chose stem cell therapy as an alternative to surgery. I'm just excited because patients that have been pain for years that are now doing the things that they want to do, and Mike's just going to be adding to that list. Call Aligned Integrative Medicine for exam and x-rays to see if you qualify for stem cell treatment. So we're back here, start of the fourth quarter. Nature Coast will be taking over. It's uh, going to be third and 19 for them. Fans, don't forget at the conclusion of the game here, Dave will be letting us know who the Glory Days player of the game is. And also, this is your last chance to go out and get the 25% off at the PDQ in Brooksville. Here's a snap by Hoyt. He's looking, he's looking, he's going to roll to his right, stops. Surveys the field again. He's going to cut all the way back to the left here. Still looking. Throws it downfield. Oh, just right through the hands of Sansone. You know, Hoyt did a great job of keeping his eyes downfield as he scrambled for this. Check this out on the replay. It's a long look. He, he doesn't like what he sees. Cuts it back. Holding him with his left hand and just overthrows it. Yeah, it looked like it was uh, Rodriguez was the intended receiver there. We got uh, another leopard down with another cramp. So we'll go ahead and take a break. And that was the McMurdo Family Vision Care scoreboard. So, the Sharks will bring out Ryan and Gagne to go ahead and punt. Back deep is uh, number nine, John Capel. Also number 11, Kamani Dotson. There's the punt. Headed towards Dotson. Oh, looks like he might have grabbed it. it. And touched it. 
He recovers, tries to get around to the left side, and taken down by a host of sharks. It was a feeding frenzy on that one. Well, he had some green ahead of him if he could have got a clean. But like I said earlier, catching those punts are not the easiest thing to do. That'll bring up first down for Hernando at their own 35-yard line. Again, they got to get something going here. Time is running out here in the fourth quarter. Folks, don't forget to like and subscribe here. It's free, and it helps us out and allows you to play the trivia challenge when we play it in the third quarter of every game this year. So have fun with that. So Hernando will go ahead and line up. Twins to the right. Shotgun single back. There's the snap. Saltzman going long on the right. Oh, oh all right. Nice catch. catch. Nice catch. Up to the 28-yard line. Right in front of our camera crew. Great ball. Great catch. Let's take Beat a look at the care one uh, urgent care replay. Saltzman, plenty of time. Lays it out nicely. That was actually pretty good coverage good there coverage. by uh, Rodriguez, but... Wright just went up and got the ladder and pulls it in. Nice concentration. They need some momentum if they want to stay in this game. With, you know, the beginning of the fourth quarter down by two touchdowns. So it'll be first and ten for Hernando at their at the uh, Sharks 30. Saltzman hands it off to Capel right back up the middle. He picks up about eight yards on the run up the middle. Got some momentum going. Jackson on that. Those are two pretty big plays back to back. The That's crowd is alive on this side. I mean, there's still plenty of time for them to come out. Nature Coast looks like they're going to go ahead and call a timeout. So we'll go ahead and take a timeout with them. Nature Coast 14, Hernando nothing. So we're back here, 10.49 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Hernando's got a little something cooking here, down by 14. They're driving in the Sharks' territory. It'll be a second down and two for them. Let's see what they can go ahead and dial up here. It's still plenty of time left for them to come back. It's only down 14, so... Saltzman on the center. There's a snap. Hands it off to Pell. Goes to the right. Cuts back up the middle. Gets the first down. He's down to about the 13-yard uh, line. Yeah, Capel just does a great job of getting back to his offensive lineman on that. He made one cut, got back to the back of, of, the, of his offensive lineman, and enough for a first down. Yeah, it looks like the uh, Leopards are going ahead a little bit more Hustle, a little bit more urgency now, knowing that they're down. So, they're in the red zone here. First and 10 at the 14. Saltzman again going to be under center. Capel deep. There's a snap. Hand off to Capel. Going to go up to the left side. Picks up about uh, five yards on that play. Well, whatever they gave Capel after those cramps, it's working. Hey, it was probably pickles. Got a got a shark down this time. Hopefully, yep. it's a cramp as well. Yeah, yeah. It looks like he's trying to get up. Yeah, that's a cramp. Yeah, and now contagious. Take a quick break while they get stretched out on the field. For the past five years, I haven't ran. Uh, because I just believed that my body was on the decline, that the pain that I was experiencing uh, was not 
uh, uh, tolerable enough for me to go out and run. And, and the day that he adjusted me, I felt that relief and I felt like I could actually put on my cleats again. Now we're back here, Hernando on the move. Deep in the Sharks territory. Gonna be second down. Oh. Ah. And there's a penalty. Illegal substitution. Yes, sir. Chester's a little late to get off the field. It's gonna cost them five. Again, the mental mistakes. They, they have the momentum, they're going nicely, and then the little mental mistakes causes them to go back. When they brought him back in, so maybe it wasn't him that was in the wrong spot, but it will be second and ten. Four down territory here. Nine minutes and 40 seconds to play in the, in the contest. So Capel lined up in the quarterback position. You got right moving to the right. Capel's going to go right up the middle. Nice run off the edge there by Riggins. Taking him down. Capel picks up about two. Mendez somehow ended up with the football after that play. But it'll bring up third down for the Leopards. Connor Riggins has a nice little game here for the Sharks, too. His name has been called quite frequently, both offense and defense. Yeah. So Saltzman comes back out. He'll be in the shotgun. It's going to be third and about uh, nine and a half for Hernando. There's a snap. The hand off the Capel. Oh, meet, met immediately in the backfield by oh, both yeah. the Sharks. They had four four Sharks at once. Including Carlos Mendez. Yep, Mendez was one of the first ones in there. Aiden, Aiden Orta was the last Shark in there to finish him off. But it's fourth down. And it, it goes back to that penalty, Paul, you brought up. that Those are drive killers. Yeah, when you start getting those mistakes like that, again, it, it's, it's, it's mental mistakes. It's not physical mistakes. It's mental mistakes on that part there, personnel changes, things like that. You know, those are the things that hurt you. So Hernando's putting them themselves in a hole here, looking to get their first points of the year. I'm fourth and long. Saltzman in the pocket, looking, looking, heavy pressure, throws it across. Oh, oh. right through his hands. Nice defense there yeah. by Avion Jackson. Jackson knocks it out of his hands at the line, at the uh, end zone. Check this out on the replay. The ball is right there. And Jackson, like you said, he's inches away from, from scoring that. The first points of this season. So that'll the turn the... That'll turn the ball, the ball over there to the Sharks. We'll have it at their 14-yard line with a 14-0 lead here. Time running out for Hernando. 7.35 left to go here in the game. And this, this is where the 235-pound running back comes into play. He's been bruising up the defenses all, all game long, and now you just need him to pick up a couple first downs and run out some clock. Yeah, heavy dose of Cromer is going to happen right here. He's looking, he's looking, he cuts back to the middle. Picks up about four yards on that. Taken down by uh, number two, Gabriel Sansone. But yeah, this is this is a time, you know, when you do have a guy that's six foot 235. You know, and you're up 14. And towards the end of the game, you can just feed him the ball. Just let him wear the defense out. And you can tell the Sharks are, are in no hurry to uh, line this ball up. There's Big Cromer on the, on the TV right now. So five wide, man in motion. Hoyt takes it himself. He's going to go right up the middle. He's looking for opening. He's got it. 
He's up to the 50, up to the 40, up to the 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Sharks. The seas parted, and he took care of business. You know, he, didn't, he makes one great cut, and then it was all about the speed after that. We could draw that up on a replay, maybe. Yeah, they spread. They they went five wide, so they spread out the defenses a little bit, and then everybody bites on the fake, and then Hoyt goes right up the middle. Yeah, there was a big hole there again. The, the offensive line been playing stellar tonight for the Sharks, opening holes for for Cromer, opening holes for Hoyt. So here's the extra point is up. It's good. Florkowski with the extra point that'll put up the Sharks. 21 0 here. 6.38 left to go. At this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break here, here in the fourth quarter with Nature Coast up 21. Hernando, nothing. So welcome back, Gulf Coast Sports Network's coverage here of the Nature Coast Sharks against the Hernando Leopards here in beautiful Tom Fisher Memorial Stadium in downtown Brooksville with the Sharks up 21-0. Hernando's got to get something rolling. At this point, it's almost, you know, just a little victory here and there on the field, like maybe putting some points on the board. There's the kickoff by Gagne. A fair catch called for by Hernando. At the 34 yard line. So. Well, you can tell Hernando did work on that because that was something that Hudson got, got him on twice last week. He made the fair catch, and now they have the ball. So it looks like we're going to go ahead and have our final water break of the evening. So, with Hernando up, or excuse me, Hernando down 21 nothing. Again, like I was saying, you know, a little bit of moral victory here and there. A uh, couple drives, get a nice, decent drive going. They've played pretty well tonight overall. Um, again, though, mental mistakes, it'll get you every time. You start getting those penalties, those are drive killers, and it shows. You know, Paul, three years ago we did this game and Hernando came back to win the game down by 20. They were down 17 in the fourth quarter and came back and won that game three years ago right here. And GC Essen was there for that. So let's see what Hernando's got. First and 10 at their own 34-yard line. Saltzman in the shotgun. There's the snap. He's dropped back looking to pass, looking to the right side. Oh, that's picked off by Connor Riggins. He's still on his feet. He's up to the 25. He cuts back in the middle. Gets taken down at about the Hernando 13. There is a flag on the play. Uh, it's going to be uh, post uh, possession, though. Check it out the care one insert replay. It, you know, right there it is. Boot. Nice ball. That's a catch if he... If, uh, it was close to him going down there at the 39, but he kept his balance, it looked like, and he uh, went ahead and picked up a couple, uh, about another 25 more yards on that. So we'll see what the referees got on the on the call here. Yeah, that would have been a completed pass for the Leopards if Connor Riggins did not sneak underneath that. But he did a good job on the return, keeping his balance, staying in bounds. I will say that receiver did get a pretty good lick, though. 
He did. Yeah, he, did. He, he got a pretty good lick back here, so. Officials are still discussing on what the play is going to be called. The flag, excuse me, personal foul. But it's still going to be the Sharks ball. Yep. They're going to back them up. It's a post-possession foul, so the Sharks will still have the ball. They'll have it back down anyway. We're the area where we thought he might have fell and uh, slipped and put his knee down. So uh, it's at the end of the run because it's post possession. So wow. that'll bring up uh, first and ten for the Sharks with a twenty-one nothing lead here. Six twenty-five left to go. They are in Hernando territory at the thirty-nine yard line. Again. We'll probably be seeing a heavy dose of Cromer, heavy dose of Hoyt up the middle. Cromer's got his helmet off. We can see him walking the sidelines. They're going to give him a little rest. Well, he's coming into the huddle. Probably just to wish his buddies some good luck, hold on to the ball. They may be trying to get some of those younger athletes the ball as well. But it shouldn't go in the air, I wouldn't think. Oh, no. I don't, You know, if you were... Uh, coach over there there's no chance in in heck that you're going to be throwing this ball around uh with a 21 nothing lead you know you just want to go ahead and run this time out uh you know you've you've had nothing but luck or excuse me uh nothing but good fortune running up the middle now if you're hernando you might maybe want to stack up in the middle a little bit here they do have the freshman in the backfield there's a snap there's the handoff and that's the freshman, Cardinal Arnold, getting his first carry of the night. Now that would be Harvin. The Sear Harvin for the Sharks. So that'll bring up uh, second down and six. Correction, second down and eight. Pick up... Uh, Two on that play. Looks like uh, Harvin's going to be replacing Cromer on this here for the rest of this uh, quarter here. If things go according to the Sharks' way. There's a snap. It's low. It's loose. Hoyt just trying to fall on it. Pulls it in. He does get it. There is a flag on the far side of the field. We're going to have to see about that. It's going to be a motion. Are they going to decline it? No, decline. So with the Sharks now facing, uh, well, third down and 19. Homer did sneak back in. Oh, yeah, he put the helmet on and came right back in, so. So Hoyt, there's the motion. Here's Williams. Cuts back into the middle. Looks like he picks up about uh, eight yards on that play. And so that'll bring up fourth down at about 11. Clock is ticking with 446 and running. And they are going to use every bit of that clock, too. They're going to wind it down as far as they can go. Doesn't look like they're going to be bringing the punter in. So they'll probably just go ahead and try another run here. Just to keep the time rolling. They got trips to the left. They got five receivers set. So you know Hoyt's probably going to take this and run it right up the middle. Yeah, there's the fake. 
He's looking. He is actually throwing the ball, going down right field. He tries to cut back in. Nice oh. attempt. Got some penalty flags in the vicinity of the receiver. Yeah, Edney tried to cut back in to catch the ball. Looks like Falk maybe be uh, the victim of a possible pass interference on that. See what the call is. And then maybe Garasecki on that. Yeah. Pass interference on the defense. That's going to ping up the first down. I, something they did not need. So first and ten for the Sharks at the 25-yard line of Hernando. Quite surprisingly that they threw the ball on that. But the dozer formation is in. Cromer gets it, looks to the left, cuts back up the middle. There's a wide open hole. He fights off, too. He's going to the corner. Last chance. Touchdown, Sharks. Check out the Care One instant replay on this. You can see, again, he starts to go to the left. Then he sees that hole again right in the middle. Breaks off a couple tackles, outruns the man to the corner of the end zone for a Sharks touchdown. They're looking to go up 28-0. Flokowski's on for the extra point for the Sharks. There's a snap. Kick is up. No good. Wide right. So 3.59 left here to go in regulation, and Sharks up 27-0. And we're going to go ahead and take a break. And we're back here. Go ahead. The Sharks going to be kicking off. Don't forget, at the end of the game, we're going to be going ahead and announcing our player of the game, the Glory Days player of the game. Dave will have that here at the conclusion. They'll get fed by Glory Days, and we're going to give them a GCSN T-shirt. Excited to announce that player in the next four minutes. Jackney will kick off. It's a live ball. There's a bounce. Live ball. Oh, Knocked out, out of bounds. bounds. Gusecki. Tries to pick it up, knock it out of bounds. And that'll start Hernando deep in their hole at their own 14-yard line. So, Coach Scraggle is going to go ahead and... I have to go ahead and take a look at what's going on here... Fixing the mistakes is going to be priority number one, I think, in my opinion. Um, concentration needs to be there. Um, again, they they haven't played all that bad at all. Uh, defensively, they've given up quite a bit. I think you can see the uh, their stamina is a little bit a little bit left uh, left in the uh, in the halftime locker room here. Yeah, so, the second half hasn't been kind to him in the first two games, but they do have some pieces to work around, and I think Coach Cargill will be able to pull some of those pieces together in the coming games. Oh, absolutely. Salzman back, looking, looking to the right, fires it off. Nice catch. Gasecki on that. Nice little pass there by Salzman. Nice catch on Gasecki's part. That's what we needed right there. Let's take a care one instant replay look. I love that he's dropping back and still throwing the ball even after the last interception. And that's a great ball right at the toe tap of the the, the sideline there. 
and that goes back to what you said. You know, there, there's pieces there that, you know, he definitely he, he's looking good throwing the ball. The receivers appear to be making some nice catches. There's a couple of nice catches by Gasecki tonight and uh, Leandre Wright. So, but we got a five five uh, receiver spread out here. Saltzman in the pocket, drops back, looking, looking, heavy pressure, throws it over the middle, and it's picked off. Avion Jackson climbs the ladder in front of Gasecki, takes it down. <coughs> yes, QB Saltzman just got pressured, and as soon as he le releases this ball, you're going to see him get contact. Looks like number nine for the uh, Sharks. Yeah, that's Chaz Bolin. Yeah, Chaz got 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 a good lick on the quarterback Saltzman. Bolin had nine tackles last week, so it's the first time uh, we're barking his name out. So at this point, the Sharks will go ahead and probably just go ahead and do what they can to run down the clock, take this victory home. They do have a, a jump back set. Here. Yeah, they got three backs back there right now. No receivers. Tight ends. It'll, it'll be first and ten for the Sharks at their own 39. Bromer and uh, Harvin in the backfield. The pitch is to Harvin. He goes around the left. Oh, that's a quick way to get in there. Nice tackle. Colton Asher on that for the Hernando Leopards. Yeah, about a loss of five there, Paul. Yeah, that'll bring up second and 15. Second and 16. Time winding down. 3.12 left to go here in the game. There's a snap. Hoyt again it goes out to the right to Harpin this time. He cuts around the right side. Gets his six yards back, ball. Yeah, Kurt, uh, Kamani Dotson on the tackle there for Hernando. So we're back to the original line of scrimmage, third and ten for Sharks. Sharks looking to see if they can get a first down here and end this. There's a snap, the handoff. Harvin, oh, immediately taken down in the backfield. Looks like Jeremiah Brown on the tackle. Nice open field tackle there by Brown. Immediately, immediately to the ball. It's going to be a punting situation. Just under two minutes to go in the contest. Stick around. We have the Glory Days player announcement coming up very, very soon. So fourth and 14 for the Sharks. Gagney back to punt. Gusecki back deep. Correction, that looks like Brown back deep for the uh, Leopards. There's the punt. Nice punt there by Gagney. Brown fields it. He's looking upfield. He cuts up into the middle. Brings it across to the 41-yard line. Taken down there by number nine, Chaz Bolin. So Leopard will have it uh, first and ten at their own 41. 125 left to go here in the game. So it looks like Nature Coast is going to be starting the year off 2-0. Early victories in the season are always crucial come playoff time. Builds momentum into the next week. Hernandez. Well, yeah, next week they'll, they'll have a full week of practice. But next week they, we're, we're going to be at the Nature Coast Springstead game. An instant classic last year. Uh, enter, <laughs> I mean, these guys are just a few miles down the road from one another. Always a good matchup. 
Saltzman, heavy pressure on the right. He's going to be taken down. He looks like he's able to get it out. Uh, he didn't get out of the tackle pocket. So that's going to go ahead and uh, it's going to cost them. That was heavy pressure. Heavy pressure. That was number uh, 33, Johnny Labder. So that's going to move them back. Minute 18 left. Still in the empty set, Paul. Yeah, five wide. Saltzman looking to go ahead and uh, might be coming over here to the right side again. Maybe going deep uh, to Gasecki. Or maybe to right. He's looking to the right. There it is, the Gasecki off to the right there. He gets up to about the 38-yard line. And that's a play you were talking about where Coach Gargle can 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 work with that. Take, take that play and continue to to put it into the game plan early just a deep out catches the ball falls down moves the chains maybe not here but it's little things like that that you take to the next week you know you improve on the little steps you know uh overall the game hasn't gone in their favor but there's little things that they're doing that is an improvement from each week and that's what you want to show so it'll be third down and about uh, 14 for saltzman Heavy pressure again. He is wrapped up and taken down in the backfield. Number 46, Donovan Mangozo. We've called his name a few times tonight. Also heavy pressure by number 38, Norda. So. Looks so like that's going to be the, uh, I don't know if they're going to snap another, another play. We have a lot of players cramping and. Walking to the sideline, so that should be your contest. So that'll do it here for tonight with Nature Coast 27, Hernando nothing, scoring the victory. Dave, who is our Glory Days player of the game? Well, our, our Glory Days player of the game is Jackson Hoyt, the quarterback for Nature Coast. He, he ran 70-yard touchdown. He threw another touchdown in the end zone. Great game, young man. Two touchdowns for the Sharks. And tonight's Glory Days Player of the Game. Well, Dave, overall, the Sharks showed that uh, at this point they're a step ahead of Hernando. But again, nothing to put Hernando uh, hang their heads with. They can go ahead, take the positives out of this game, and build on from there. The Sharks will move on, like you said. We'll play, go ahead and play uh, Springstead next week. Uh, any final thoughts, Dave? Well, I'm excited. I'm definitely excited for the game next week. Uh, and and what you know, what a game. You know, 27 to zero in favor of the Sharks. The second half came down to the Sharks just continue to, to march the ball through the running game. Uh, but j just like you said, next week we're excited to see uh, the the Sharks and the Eagles go at it. Well, thank you, folks, for tuning in to Gulf Coast Sports Network. We appreciate it. The final score tonight at Tom Fisher Memorial Stadium, Nature Coach Sharks 27, Hernando Leppers nothing. Let's go ahead and send it over to Will. Thank you, Paul and Dave. Another great call for another great ball game here on the Gulf Coast Sports Network. We hope you enjoyed watching our broadcast tonight. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can find us by searching at GCSN Broadcast. As always, we've got... Our wonderful sponsors, please support them as they support us bringing you these wonderful programs and athletes live week after week on GCSN. For Paul Smith, Dave Barrett, Wild Bill Lizer, John McMurdo, Derwin Gray, I'm Will Wilkie, and we'll see you next time.